And we're back for another amazing episode of Crossroads Comedy Project. We are recording this from the famed, the premier, the best comedy club in the state of Kentucky. That's right, I said it. Fuck everybody else. I don't care. Screw them all. <laughs> uh, I'm one of your hosts, Josh Sardom. No, I'm Mishalash. And uh, today we have a good friend of ours on the show. Uh, this guy's a fantastic local comic. Uh, he's been burning it up everywhere he goes. Matter of fact, every show I have him on is usually like close to capacity. Goo hey. McIntyre. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome, man. We're, we're real happy that you're on our show. And uh, man, we, uh, we, we have a lot of fun with folks uh, when they come on here. So uh, we were really looking forward to you being on here. We've been trying to, Itch and I have been talking about getting you on for like, I don't know, months now. We keep yeah. saying we got to get Goo. We got to get Goo. <laughs> He's too big for us. <laughs> nah, 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 man. He said it right. Local. <laughs> local. Well, you know, you're, you're locally known to me, you know, I mean, so that's, that's why I bring that up. But, uh, Goo, man. Uh, so uh, what I really want to know, man, is I want to know your story. Like, like how did, how did, like, when was comedy, like, in your head? When, when did you say, okay, I'm going to do that? Well, man, it, it really goes back to my grandmother. Okay. I have a grandmother that's, like, the funniest woman, like, you would ever meet. And so, like, growing up in, in the house or in the household, it's all it was was laughter and, like, right. witty, funny, uh, quick comebacks. Um, so it was always laughter, and it's just something that, it was basically instilled in us growing up. And then it went to my mom. And like my mom is like, my mom's like the funniest woman that never got on stage. Oh, really? That, that's, how I, that's how I consider um, my mom. And every time I was with her, we would always laugh, joke. Def Comedy Jam was on TV. So we watched a lot of Def Comedy Jam. We watched a lot of uh, BET Comic View um, that was on TV. We watched Robin Williams. We watched a lot of Bob Saget. Um, so like, I was um, just basically comedy was always there, and I was always class clown in high school. Yeah. Um, so it was I was always a funny guy, you know. But I never even thought about getting on stage and doing comedy because actually I started out going getting on stage. I was a rapper. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I was a rapper. So I did that for like four years with a good friend of mine. Well, you got uh, that voice. You got that voice. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good friend of mine. But I was always when we was on stage performing, I would say some funny stuff. Do a little two bit, two minute bit. Nobody even would, you know, understand. I was trying to throw some comedy into our act, right? And um, so I did that. Then um, actually in college, I got dared to do comedy. Um, I got on stage and did comedy. And actually, the first time I did comedy, I got not one laugh. No, no. Who dared you to do this? My best friend, Damien Hall. Okay. He dared me to get on stage and do comedy. When I first got on stage, and and no do laughs, comedy, no laughs whatsoever. <laughs> no laughs. And you kept coming back for more. <laughs> <laughs> no laughs. And that was the last time I got on stage and didn't get laughs. Um, I got determined to the fact that look, I'm gonna make these people laugh. So I had to go back and actually get a show together. Right. Because when you get on stage, you don't really have a stuff you really want to talk about. Right. You all over the place. So I was kind of like all over the place. Right. And so I went back. I got me some. I got me some jokes together. Got a couple laughs. I did it a second time, and then I stopped. So I just could continue to do music. And um, and this was in college? This was in college. Okay. And then um, I started traveling a little bit with the music, uh, doing a little bit. And we actually was a pretty good group, actually. We had some uh, record labels actually looking at us. And um, that fell through, of course, that fell through. But I still had a hunger for the stage. Sure. I had a mad hunger for the stage. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this comedy thing out. So I started in uh, Comedy Caravan okay. in Louisville is where I started doing amateur nights and th things like that. And I got um, – I was getting looked at by people, and then I started doing, like, feature shows and that thing and whatnot. Then um, I started just going around traveling and getting in where I can get in on open mics and little small shows, $25 here, $50 there. And um, before you know it, I was doing some headlining gigs and a couple of uh, – Constant headline, uh, headline gigs I was doing down in Nashville. Um, and so that's my story. And then I can move back. I moved back to Kentucky um, because I feel like Kentucky's a place where somebody has to put it on the map. Yeah. Not just somebody, but a group of people put it on the map. You know, like we have our, our comedy family that we have that we do shows with. Right. And um, I feel like me and Starks talk all the time, which is my close friend. Big up to Larry Starks. Yeah, we just um, had him on the show not too long ago. Yeah, awesome. me and him talk a lot about putting Kentucky on the map. Like, we don't want to go somewhere else and blow up in, like, let's say Atlanta or blow up in um, St. Louis. We, we want to be from Kentucky, travel around, do comedy, and known for Kentucky comedy. Yeah. So that's basically my story, man, and I'm still trying to grind and um, 
get to that point to where, you know, I can be like a headline in some clubs, man. Yeah, I, I mean, you're definitely heading the right way. You're one of the, the like, in a, a small handful of guys in the area that w- is going to blow up. It's not it's not a question of will you, it's just a question of when. Appreciate that. Appreciate no, it's that. true. I mean, I think you agree with that, don't no, you? No, I absolutely agree with that. Appreciate it. Or appreciate we wouldn't it. have you on the show, you know? That's the way we feel, at least. <laughs> been home. It's, it's, it doesn't mean to be a prick. It just comes out that way. No, it's <laughs> just cool, man. It's just cool, man. I like, I I was like a how nicer guy. does it. I was a nicer guy until I met you, Josh. <laughs> Josh will turn you away, though, man. Josh right? sit there and start talking politics to you and everything that's going on. You'd be like, fuck America. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> but I, he, he loves it because he's military, but he starts talking about the stuff that's going on that we don't know about and we don't understand like he knows. But he'd be yeah, like, that's man, true. fuck America, man. I had no idea I was that drunk around you that before. <laughs> <laughs> there is two sides of Josh. There's drunken Josh and regular Josh, that's as true. I've learned. That's true. I, I don't see too much of regular Josh, I guess, because we always doing this show. <laughs> always, always drunk Josh, I guess. Drunk Josh. <laughs> you know, I'm never fat-free Josh, though. Never. I've yeah. got I've got plenty of stuffing, so <laughs> not fat free. Not fat free. No. <laughs> Since ninety three. Not not Josh Light. No, no. I'm I'm heavy. Heavy Josh. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think we wore out the milk references, did we? <laughs> <laughs> he needs some milk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh what's coming up? Anything coming up for you? Uh you you got uh some shows or anything you're gonna be doing? Man, right now, uh what what I've been doing is I got tired of the set I've been doing. I got tired of, you know, some of the jokes I've been doing, so I've been trying to get some new ones to incorporate into my set, um, which, you know, if you continue to do shows and the way the way I do comedy, let me go back. The way that I do comedy, I come up with ideas. I don't really write them down. The reason why I don't write them down, because I don't want to be a comic that if the punchline don't work, it's over. I'm up on stage looking dumb, looking silly. Right. I want to be able to ad lib know what the what the audience is laughing about and incorporate that in my jokes. So I come up with ideas. I have a set of, set of ideas that I'm going to talk about on stage and then I perform them. So right now I'm just basically thinking about ideas to incorporate to have a smooth set show. Y'all been to, I had done plenty of shows with y'all, so y'all oh, understand yeah. that, you know, I get on stage and I'll talk about some stuff over here for 10 minutes and, it you know, it'll go pretty well with the crowd. But to um, elevate uh, my level of, comedy that I want to get to, I need to be able to um, have some certain things that I can talk about to go over with both sides of the crowd, um, both demographics and things of that nature, clean and not so clean comedy. Sure. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, As far as shows go, um, I got some in the works right now. I don't have no definites because I'm trying to get bigger shows, uh, so to say. Um, every show's great, you know, so yeah, no, any, I, I any show I mean. get, I know I'm, I'm on it, but I'm trying to get to another level because I feel like I've been doing it long enough to uh, get to that level, um, but it's all about what you put in to get to that level. Sure, so, and, and how long have you been doing it now? I've actually been doing comedy professionally for eight years. Eight years, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're, at the, you're at that point where you're getting ready to just blow the ceiling up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, side note, um, I don't hate America. I, I don't know why that came out that way. but <laughs> Nah, I'm not saying that you do, but I'm just saying like the stuff that you know we have conversations about, I, I, I have somebody else thinking that way. I, I just, know you love it. Oh, no, I love America. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't stand a lot of the shit that's going on right now. Right, Absolutely. right, right, right. Absolutely. Right. My bad for... He, he he don't. He loves America. He is a patriot. It's just that some of the conversations we have, I might feel that way. <laughs> I might end up feeling that way. Well, let me take this opportunity to apologize to you. Because <laughs> it's never meant to be like that. I just, sometimes when I'm drunk, in fact, a lot of times when I'm drunk, I just ramble. It, it happens. That's the best conversation I have, for real. And it's know? an honest conversation, Honest too. conversation. It's an honest conversation, because you're... Your shield and everything goes down. Uh, I used to wait to have a conversation with a girl once we once I got her drunk. <laughs> see, see where the conversation would go. Speaking of girls, uh, you just uh, got engaged recently, didn't you? Yeah, man, I got engaged, nice. man, to the beautiful and wonderful Miss Carrie Katz. Yeah, I've yeah. met her. She's a wonderful young lady, and that, that's congratulations from us, man. That's awesome. Thank you so much, man. Because uh, I didn't really believe in the whole marriage thing before no. I met Carrie, so it's like you know she came along and. She put up with my shit, and she uh, stood by my side. So it's like, you know, you find somebody that's rare. You, yeah. You, you, you keep it. Yeah. You know, my daddy said a young fool becomes an old fool. <laughs> so I wasn't going to continue to be a, a young fool while I was an old guy, an old man. So I found a great woman that's doing great things for herself. Um, she's the head principal at Bourbon County High School and doing a great thing over there at their school. So um, 
She's a great woman. Yeah, yeah. I love you. <laughs> she she is fantastic. Um, Thanks, man. No, it's not wrong. Speaking of uh, schools, are you still working over in uh, Scott County? Or you, you're, no, you, no. You're, you're doing a, a Toyota. I'm at the Toyota gig right now, man. Yeah. I had a Toyota gig. I had to uh, get some more money, man. I don't know if uh, – well, you, you married. Oh, yeah. So I know you know what that money's like. You oh, know yeah. what that check's like. Yep. Uh, I ain't trying to be paying for that three years down the road. So it's <laughs> like, you know, I got the job, honestly, to uh, – to get more money to have something stable. Yeah. Um, working at the school, I really wasn't making a whole lot most, of money. I know? think I think most of us comics all have other gigs. You right. know, comedy is just something where we're we're praying will work out to be the prime gig. You know, because what a lot of people don't understand is like even if you are traveling comic, you're not breaking the bank. No, you know, you're not really living large. No, you you know you, you got to do a lot of shows and get to a certain level, headlining some of the major clubs or tours. That's, to really make a lot of money right i mean you spend all this money to get to a place right you eat and then you get your check at the end of the week and you're like well that just covered that weekend yeah right because <laughs> the money you get on, on on the road you still gotta have a place to stay yeah. gas to get home yeah, food yeah to lot, eat. even a lot of headliners really don't make a lot of money at all right well depends, traveling headliners it, it, de- it make- depends on their their gate deals and stuff i mean everybody has a different deal that's the one thing that i've i've learned i mean some people get part of the gate some people get the whole gate uh you know some people have other arrangements i mean right. depends it's, on the it's club. based on your popularity as well yeah i mean it really I mean, depends on the club and the owner now this owner is pretty straight up i mean he he tells you right up right up front what the hell's going on right yeah which is nice and that's why uh, jordan is the man the man. He's the man. Yeah. Keep sucking up, Josh. Go ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's not listening, so they don't have to worry. Actually, he listens to every episode. He does. Does he really? Yeah, he does. And he, he, he I got a message for for you from him, but I'm not going to do it on the air because it's oh, embarrassing. Okay. Sometimes I wonder if he's in his office upstairs just <laughs> listening sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I want to also congratulate y'all for having this. I mean, it's oh. a great outlet for um, – you guys first, and um, people like myself second, you know, to uh, get known, or people who hasn't heard the name before to get familiar with the name. So, like, if they see it on the flyer or hear it over the radio, like, oh, that's the guy that was on Ish and Josh's show. Yep. Let's go check him out, see what's going on. So mm-hmm. I really appreciate this. Man. No, not a problem, man. And we're actually getting more and more traction every – every. I, I'm, Nate Bergazzi was just on uh, – he was on what? Um, what show was it? He was just on one of the late-night shows. And uh, I don't remember. we had him in here, and it's funny because in the last 30 days, his his podcast has blown up on our mm-hmm. show. Right. Even more just because. His popularity is getting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you, you never know. We're, we're on Laughable. Um, and that's an app that, uh, like a, an app and a website you can go to. And if somebody types in Goo McIntyre, it'll pull up every every show that you were on. Okay. Good stuff. So, so we're registered on Laughable. So, like, you can go to Laughable, type in Goo McIntyre, and boom, our show will pop up. Good stuff, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. It it makes it one spot shop for for everybody that wants to like look up their favorite guy. They can see all the the podcasts that are on. It's really neat. That's good stuff. It's a man. shout out to Laughable. I mean, we we should have been more popular than we are now. I mean, the initial premise of this was Josh, you know, hates America. He's like, we yes, you. He's like, yes, you're an Arab. You should hate America. Let's do a show. He's and so you know, he was, he was drunk, and we're like, yeah, this is awesome. And then he like sobered up and started. Tell me he's military and he loves America and all that. I'm he's like, so fine, full. I'll go with it. <laughs> right, so, right. So right. I don't know. <laughs> no, the original premise of the show is he's Palestinian and I'm a Jew, and we're not. We're actually not supposed to be friends, but we are. Oh yeah. So we're saying, you know, everybody can get along if you know. That's true. You just if you give a little bit of effort, everybody can get along. Palestinian, Jew, and African. That sounds like the start of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Larry say something like that? <laughs> did, Larry, did Larry say I something don't know. like that? Sounds like I think I heard that. I before. can hear Don Rickles saying that. A Palestinian, a Jew, and a black guy walk into you know. I mean, just, <laughs> oh, no, right. <laughs> yeah, it's the start of a good joke. Right there. It, it definitely is. <laughs> We've had some interesting personalities on the show. We, we yeah, yeah there's we some good ones. I mean, <laughs> the it, stories, man. Def- Stories. Uh, so you went to college. Where did you go to college? I went to Eastern. I went to college at EKU, man. All right. Yeah, all right. I went down there at EKU. Didn't you man. play ball there? I was going to play ball, but I didn't end up playing oh, ball, right. man, because <laughs> I'm a jokester, man. And <laughs> I need my time. You know, <laughs> like playing me. sports in college is, um, it takes up all your time. Mm-hmm. Like from sun up to sun down, it's, it's you doing that sport. I mean, that's why they have tutors. You don't even have time to really be in classrooms. You, yeah. you got to be doing the sport. My uh, best friend, Damian Hall, was the same guy that dared me to get on stage. He played football down there, and he was going from uh, 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. doing football. So um, that just wasn't my passion. You know, a lot of people 
uh, a do it just because they love the game like it. Like um, mm-hmm. we play sports growing up because that's what you do. You know, I me mean? it's what you do. It wasn't like I was out there at five in the morning working out saying I'm gonna get to the NFL or I'm gonna get to the NBA. Mm-hmm. It's just something that I was naturally gifted at, so I did it, and that's that's the story behind the sports. And I got into college and. Uh, the uh, sorority Zeta, the Zetas, I think it's Zeta Phi Theta, Zeta Phi Theta, something like that, but it's the Zetas. They always would have me MC their talent shows. Nice. So that was another outlet for me to get on stage and uh, to do some comedy. And uh, I did of, uh, I don't know if y'all know about the hip hop group Goody Mob, if anybody heard about them. Mm-hmm. Well, they had a concert and I MC that as well. So I had a, uh, you know, some experience getting on stage in front of my peers and the group of people and the hardest people to get on stage with is is your peers. Yeah, you know, because I, I, they're gonna judge imagine. you. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna judge you pretty tough. That, that's the one advantage I I had becoming a comic at forty three years old mm-hmm. because I mean everybody was younger than me. I had I had the experience. I had I had plenty of time getting them on in front of people. Right. So I've never really had those nerves of being in front of my peers, so to speak, because I I really didn't have any. I mean, it's if it, it, a group of comics is mm-hmm. my peers. But age-wise, I mean, I wasn't even worried about it. Right. Yeah. Um, I think I think comedy is the one gig, as far as entertainment, that's ageless. Yeah. Like you can go and do comedy forever. You know. Yeah. There's always going to be a group or. Um, Especially if you're good. Yes. If you're a good comic and you find see the key the key to the, of comedy is finding your crowd. Right. You know, like we do a lot of shows and there's different crowds there. Like you might kill it one night. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Then we go to a different show. There's somebody different there. You might kill it. Then I might kill it. So, you know, it's just about finding your crowd. Right. And that's, a, and that's one of the problems that, you know, not really a problem, but it is a problem that I run into in Lexington. Y'all know my comedy. My comedy is mom and pop's country, black folk growing mm-hmm. up, you mm-hmm. know, uncle been in prison, that type, of, that type of comedy. So it's hard for me to find that type of crowd right here in Lexington, Kentucky. Sure. You know, that it comes out to local shows. Yeah. You know, open it up for a big act. Yeah, you'll get your crowd because they come to that. But as far as doing a local show and headlining, it's hard for that crowd to come out. Sure. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely trials and tribulations of a, a, a comic, the growing pains of a comic. Right. So you actually get a following. You actually have quite a, a following, though. I do. I, 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 and, and I do. I appreciate everybody that comes out. And I do have a quite a following. Um that comes out and, and, and supports, uh, God, God bless me with that. So that is a good thing about that. But, you know, you also want to have people you don't know come to a show. Sure. They get and, introduced to you. Yeah. yeah. Get introduced to you. Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm blessed, man. I, I have a good little crowd everywhere I go, man. And like when we did the life at laugh out loud, I mean, the, um, not the laugh out loud, the laugh your bluegrass off. Right. I had a good following that came and supported, man. So yeah. Hope it's the same thing. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, as far as you don't know who knows who, because mm-hmm. when you and I first did a show together, I was talking to my sister and I said, hey, you know, I'm doing the show, uh, the headliner's Goo McInerney. She goes, you know Goo? And I'm like, wait, you know Goo? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> um, yeah. my, my nephew, Nick, uh, mm-hmm. he played football for Scott County. Right. And you were a coach over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I coach, I coach Nick, man. Nick's a great kid. Uh, we called him the doctor because he was a smart kid, man. Yeah. He always had great grades in school. And uh, yeah, man, that's the thing about me. What you get from me. Is what you always get from me. Right. So who I am with you is who I am with the kids, you know. Right. Fun, funny, you know, because I think a lot of times, even in the school setting, um, people got to be able to have a good time and relate. If you always point your finger at somebody and you look like you're not having a good time, what you think you the reaction you're going to get from them sure. is, you know. So I have a great rapport with the kids when I was working at the school. Um, they call me Coach Goo, and they loved it, so. I think you you just got to be able to be yourself in any kind of situation and know how to be a grown up at the same time. Yeah, it's, and that that applies to comedy so hard too. Yeah. Uh, so why goo? Story behind goo. Yeah, um, I'm dying to know. I had goo before I had my real name actually. Okay. <laughs> the first the first day and a half or two days I was in the um, hospital after I was born, my mama didn't couldn't think of a name to name me. Um, so my aunt my aunt Roslyn my aunt Roslyn uh, my aunt Roslyn Walker. Um, which is actually, she was actually married to Kenny Walker, the basketball player for Scott County. Oh, I mean, really? for Kentucky, yes. Okay. Uh, Ross and Walker came in and said, I look like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> <laughs> I had the big head, the squinty eyes, and she thought, thought I looked like Mr. Magoo, so she called me Goo. And um, ever since then, I've been known as Goo. Yeah. Um, like, hardly anybody called me by my real name, so everybody always called me Goo. Yeah. So that's what I, that's what I always went by. What is your real name? My real name's Mario. Mario. I think I knew that at one point in time. I just fell yeah, out of my head maybe i get drunk a lot 
Um, yeah. you, you know. <laughs> Jesus, Josh. But I always have to explain, like, you Mario or you, 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 you Spanish? No, I'm not no, Spanish. I'm Spanish. <laughs> I'm not Spanish. Yeah. Like the video game? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not me. <laughs> it's like, dude, I'm not Italian. What are you doing? <laughs> Every time I come in, my name's Mario. Where's Luigi at? I don't know. Can you find him? It's not my problem. Do you have jokes about that? No, I, I haven't done any jokes about that, man. You should do some. That'd be good. It, it probably would be good. Go for it. So, a uh, sports fan? Yes. I'm a big sports fan, man. That's, that's, I love sports. That's, that's my main thing. It actually gets on my fiance's nerves most of the time. Um, she, uh, I actually converted her into a San Antonio Spurs fan. Okay. Which is my favorite team ever. Like, over any team that I ever liked, I love the Spurs. He's wearing a Spurs hat. Yeah, <laughs> I'm wearing a Spurs hat. <laughs> that's my favorite team, man. Um, I love them NBA, uh, NFL. I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Bills fan, okay. Had a lot of hard knocks, man. Like, are these really football players y'all putting on the field right now? Like, now, now, how did you end up being a Bills fan? 90s, man. Oh, because yeah. of the no, 90s. Parcells yes. days. Parcells era, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, All right. You know, when uh, – Tuna. They was going to the uh, – they went to the Super Bowl four years in a row and uh, came short four years in a row. Right. I end up liking them, man. So, I just – I'm a type – I'm loyal. So I stick with my teams. Man. Yeah. And, of course, college basketball, football, whatever else. I'm UK. You're all UK? Yeah, I'm UK. I like, or, I like, I like Oregon Ducks in football, though, also. But I'm UK all across the board, man. What were your thoughts on the, uh, the, the, the Madness Tour this past March? Um, I think at some point – let me let me get let me say this correctly so I won't get no haters. I, you know how it is around Kentucky. You say anything wrong about mm-hmm. UK basketball. Like, I ain't coming to see his ass. His ass ain't fun. Uh, <laughs> get him. He probably like Louisville anyway. No, I don't. I don't, I don't like strippers and, and all that. <laughs> at least UK knows how to act. At least they bred and born. Like, you're going to do this and you ain't going to tell nobody. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> do it right. Right. We're going to do it right. Um, I feel like at some point, if you have a certain uh, caliber of basketball team and you're not getting to a certain level, because, I mean, if you follow UK basketball, we shouldn't just have one championship on the Calipari. Yeah, we There's should no have way. several. You, know, you, you sure. shouldn't have one. He's a, he's a fantastic coach. Yeah. Um, he, that's what I'm saying. He's a great coach. He's yeah. a great recruiter. Right. And a great motivator. Yeah. Um, X and O's wise, I think uh, mm-hmm. he Not needs a he, yeah he needs to find him a, a, a assistant coach that can do that. But um, you got to hold him accountable for um, the lack of championships that we had. Um, you know, you have a team that should have went undefeated, and you don't play the right players to win a national championship sure. because of what? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's why, man. I love him. I don't think we need another coach at all. Like, no. There's nobody out there that I would rather have than him. But at some point, he needs to be held accountable instead of him always getting on the podium and talking about where they're young, their kids, they're young, the kids. No. The uh, I think it was 2014. I, I, I don't remember the exact year. But uh, he got up there at, like, we, we should have won. Mm-hmm. It was a championship. We should have won. Um, we didn't. And he got up there and he said, listen, uh, I asked I, – I, I, everything I asked those kids gave me, there wasn't anything more they could have done better. He said, obviously, the fault lies with me. I couldn't figure out how to beat that team. But those kids tried their ass off. When he said that, I was like, okay, I like this guy. Right. You know, someone who, who doesn't, you know, shift the blame or whatever. Well, he doesn't shift blame because he knows no one's going to blame him. Well, Think about it. Th- that might be true. Right, true. I mean, I mean, it's true. He's getting number one recruiting classes every year. No one's going to blame John Calipari. No, I'm going to blame John Calipari for that big-ass suit coat he wears, though. <laughs> so I'm like, he need, he need to get that tailored, man. Yeah, that's See true. that thing in the front? It's too much material you got on right there, man. Just because you got on pinstripes don't mean it fits. <laughs> yeah. Somebody need to tailor him better. Yeah. <laughs> he's Italian, right? <laughs> yeah, if he's Italian, you know, you, you get tailored suits. You don't do right. one. Better. I think he still gets his suits from Doll Hers, even though it's not. <laughs> he's make, I hope not. He's making seven million a year. I think he's still getting them Doll Hers suits, <laughs> even though it's clothes. I think he's still going Doll Hers. He's, he's got them all lined up in the back. <laughs> still can get them tailored, though, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you can get that thing girl. That's too big of a well, damn we'll, coat. One day when he's on the show, we'll, we'll ask him about that. We really want to get him on the show. That'd be fun. Hey, you know, he actually, actually, John Calipari is one of the most down to earth guys you ever run into. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we was eating, we was eating, me, my mom, I think my granny was eating dinner at Wagon Bone over on Jefferson, over on Short Street. Mm -hmm. We bumped into Calipari and his wife. 
they sit next to us and had a conversation like you know they knew us for years. So he's mm -hmm. one of the mo he's one of the coolest down to earth. He ain't let the fame, yeah, yeah. He never let the fame or the money get to him. You know, they say when he was in Memphis, he went to the same rib shack or wing shack, you know, and didn't do the high dollar meals all the time. So it's like that's, that's somebody you. He want. knows how to connect with the community. He's really good about yeah, that. Yeah, he's really great at that, and that's how he gets to recruit. Because I always said, you know? if he ever decided to retire and wanted to run for governor, he'd win. Yes. He could easily yeah, yeah. win here. Politician. Oh, yeah. He got a politician on his on Yeah, his he fans. could be a politician easy. Yeah. I you know? agree with that. So why the Spurs? David Robinson. Yeah. Okay. All right. David Robinson came to uh, Lexington and dropped 55 on Kentucky. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yep. Wake Forest. I'm going to find – no, right. actually, oh, Tim Duncan's Wake Forest. Oh, Tim Duncan's Wake Navy. Forest. Navy. Navy was That's right. Navy was, Navy. was David Robinson. He came dropped right. a, a 55. I was like, I like that guy. I'm going to follow that guy. And he got to the NBA, and he was still doing it, and he was scoring like 70 points a game. One of the games, he scored 71 points. And Jesus. I, I was like, yep, I'm sticking with this team. And like I said, I'm just loyal. You're just loyal. And then all of a sudden, they got Wake Forest, Tim Duncan. Number one pick. I remember watching yeah. them. I used to love the Spurs, too. Back and then. they weren't supposed like, to get so the number boring. one pick. Like, yeah. they was a good team, but Dave Robson got hurt. So they lucked up that year because Dave Robson got mm -hmm. hurt and ended up getting the number one pick. And that's how they got Tim Duncan. And a year later, they won their first – World Championship. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I like the fact that you don't like your team based on your ge geographic location. Yeah, no. Now, see, like, I'm from the Northeast, so everybody's like, so you're a Patriots fan. No, I'm not. Right. I'm actually a Colts fan. Okay. Um, but, you know, I have my reasons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, I am a Red Sox fan, though. Okay. I, I can't stop being a Red Sox fan. I've, I've watched so many games in Fenway. Do you, do you like baseball at all? Or? Um, I'm actually, like, I started to watch it. I'm a big fan of pitching. So when I started watching it, I was looking for something that keeps me um, into the game. Yeah. Kind of like when I was watching golf. Of course, you know, I, I do like watching golf, and I love tennis. Um but I started watching baseball recently because uh, Carrie's family, they love baseball. Yeah. So whenever I'm random, we're going to watch baseball. And they're big St. Louis Cardinal fans. Okay. Because uh, she's from Missouri. Sure. And uh, I started watching baseball here recently. And uh, I'm intrigued, man. Uh, the pitching's amazing. Like pitching in baseball? Yes. It's amazing. And I really wasn't into it until I started paying attention to, like, the details of pitching. So I can sit and watch four or five innings. Uh, but after that, I'm done. Yeah. It, it takes it, – you know, it, it literally <laughs> – it, it took me a long time to understand that you watch that four or five innings mm -hmm. and you take a nap. Right. And then you wake up with the last couple innings. You didn't miss much. And you, you're, you're ready to go to watch the last couple innings. It mm -hmm. took me years to figure that out. But, no, it, no you, pitching's like a chess match between that player and the bat. Right, right, it, right, it is, right. It's really intricate and it, it takes a lot of skill. I am a chess player, by the way. That really? That doesn't yes. surprise me. You play chess? No, I haven't played chess in a long time. So, yeah. no, he doesn't play chess. <laughs> I like playing chess, man. And back to your last point, you didn't really take a nap. You just passed out after, you know, third inning. Same and, thing. Yeah. Same right. thing. We just want to clarify. Same thing. But let's, let, <laughs> here's the conversation that uh, me and Curry have had a lot about different sports and different, um, different races playing different sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do y'all feel that the reason why more of the, the white people – if that's, is that okay if I say that? Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? I, I didn't know if, it's, if it was a politically correct show. Um, We're like a Neapolitan here. Okay, yeah, we, we, we are. are. It's well, fine. I mean, Josh, it is, is, really, Josh is the only I'm white vanilla. person here, so I don't really care. <laughs> He's <laughs> the strawberry. <laughs> strawberry. See, that's, that's, it's okay. So you think about you think about the sports that most of the white people play. It's um, that dominate is more of a hockey, uh, a soccer. Um, in the United States, a soccer, right, right. a tennis, tennis you know, yeah. until Serena and, v and Venus. Um, we thought that the reason why that you think about the blacks is more football, basketball, is because you don't have to put the money into the sport. There's always was a court down the field, uh, down the street. There was a field wherever you lived at where you can get with your friends and just play. You know, a lot of black families are not – um, financially stable enough to put their money into tennis or traveling with baseball or traveling with soccer. So I think when you get down to it, I think that is the basis of why certain sports are dominated by certain racial I ethnicities. actually think I think there's a lot of valid well, I, 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 I think I mean, there's there's some culture things that definitely happen, but I mean like when baseball is concerned, there's a lot of uh, like Spanish 
speaking players because yeah. there is a field on every corner there is of Mexico. A field on every corner of Mexico. I mean, it, 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 like in Cuba, there's a field everywhere. It's a big sport down there. Like soccer. I mean, you have uh, Africans and, and um, um, uh, South Americans and uh, – you know, Central Americans that play a sport because there's a field and there's a ball. Yeah. You can kick it around. You don't have to have no money to do that. Right. You know, so. But, I mean, you have a point because, like, my son plays baseball mm -hmm. now. And, and it's, it's expensive. You got to buy a bat. You got to buy uniforms. You got leagues. You got fundraiser. Gloves. Gloves. Balls. I mean, there's 12 kids on his team. Pitching machines. Right. And there's 11 <laughs> white kids and a little Arab kid in there. <laughs> right. On the team currently. <laughs> you know, and he plays soccer too, but what does soccer with He has a pair of cleats. Yeah, the money. Some the shorts. money is invested. But you're right. In yeah. You're absolutely right. I, I think that there's some validity to it. And plus, um, even if in black families, even if they do have the money, I ain't made my money on that. I ain't spending my money on that. Right. So yeah. go down the street, get that ball, because and play when some I was, basketball. Well, growing up, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. Mm. So what did we do? We went to the park and we'd play ball, right. play basketball. That's what we would do until that's it was what dark. We did. That's what we did all day, man. Like, we'd yeah. get off from Sundays, we'd get off church, go down there, still have your church socks on and your tennis shoes, and we'll hoop till <laughs> it gets dark, man. And mm -hmm. then your mama come down the street with that belt. Get your ass get in this car. Get your ass car. inside, yeah. Get your ass in this did car. Did you not see the street light on? Did you the not see the street on. light on? <laughs> you get that ass beat on the street I light. I tried to get a pump on. They laughing at me. We were bouncing the ball. It's half flat. <laughs> ain't no damn pump. Mom, that bulb ain't good in that street light. It ain't good. It's flickering. It was flickering. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, hey, I, I got I got I got class A whoopings when I was growing up. Oh, man. me too. Like tag team, mom and pops, man. You know, I walked in the house one day, my daddy had eye black on. I was like, this ain't gonna be a good whooping. <laughs> this ain't gonna be a good one. He's, he's ready for glare. He's ready for glare. <laughs> like, my dad's actually a Hall of Fame football player. Is he? Yeah, Georgetown College. I didn't yeah. know that. He, oh, had, nice. he I think he still holds it, or he held it for a long time, the, a single season rushing record. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he he was uh, really good at football, man. Now you said you're you're real into tennis. So who who's your players in tennis? Um, I love Federer. Okay, love Federer. Um, I like Nadal a lot, but I only like Nadal on clay. Right. He can't beat Federer on um hard on court. The hard court. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Djokovic is real good. Yeah, I like him a lot. I think he has advantage because of his height, though. Um, of course, I like I like I like Serena. I've never been a big fan of Venus. Um. I like Serena. I like how Serena plays the game. They're machines. Yeah, the two of them yeah, are machines. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of like a LeBron of tennis, though. She is. Like her, her body and her frame is just too massive for the others to compete with. You know, they can't. Yeah. They absolutely. And how old are they now? And they're still like killing in it. In their thirties, I least, think, which right? is rare in tennis. He's I think usually Venus is the same age as me. Um, yeah. 38, I think she's 38. That's crazy, because in I, tennis, usually yeah. like your early 30s, you're done. It's like yeah. football, you know, usually. I mean, in, unless you're like one of these people that are really friggin' good. Um, I mean, she's defying all the odds, personally. Right. Well, I mean, she's a machine. I mean, she really, the, the, they've been a machine since they I mean, we used to think, sport. I used to think Tiger Woods, man, I would watch him religiously back in the day. Thinking that, he was going to be the man. And then, that yeah, blows my mind, though. Like, how do you just lose it? I feel like after that whole scandal with him, like yeah. with, with all the hookers and whatever he was doing it's just he kind of went downhill he, then just he hurt his back he hurt his back and then mm -hmm. from there <laughs> <laughs> it's just camera just fell over because yeah it's all right we'll worry about that <laughs> Fine. it couldn't stand what ish said it had to crash that's all. <laughs> ready for your comments Josh. ish is now getting up to get the camera you're <laughs> It's falling apart. This is awesome. I'm not editing this out either, Ish. I'm not going to do it. You're a jerk. And look, it's not plugged in. It's all right. It still picks up. The okay. Sound. All right. Secondary sound. If you say so. Um, so uh, are you like a Wimbledon fan, or what What are the big tournaments you like watching? I like the U.S. Open, man. The Open? Yeah. Um, I'm big on African-American history. Yeah. So when you think about Arthur Ashe, you mm -hmm. hear him playing on Arthur Ashe court. It's right. Like, it's, just, it's just something that's like, yeah. They playing on off the dash court, you know. I like Wimbledon. I like Wimbledon as well because it's grass. Grass, you know, it's it's unique in itself. Yep. Uh, so I, I I like I like that they play on grass, man. I like I like things that are different, you know. Um, I, you'll probably see I dress different when I'm on stage. I wear like you know some crazy stuff or whatnot. But I'm into things that make people unique or make things unique. Sure. And the fact that you think about the history of playing tennis on grass, like. Well, who was the first people to play tennis on grass? Like, how did they think about find a place on grass that was hard enough to play tennis? I, yeah, it does make you wonder how the hell that happened. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really dig how much countries get into Wimbledon. And right. when I say, I'm, I'm talking like when an English guy makes it to like the finals, mm -hmm. England loses their damn mind. 
I mean, it, like you're talking, this guy goes to immediate superstar status, and if he happen or girl, mm-hmm. if they happen to win, they're going to get knighted. You know, right? <laughs> it's, right. I mean, it's who crazy. was the English guy that won it like a couple years back? I forgot his name. I was just trying to think of his name. Andy Andy Murray. Yeah, Andy Murray. He uh, he won a couple years back, and he. Pretty I, much ran. Could you imagine what he was like walking into bars? I, yeah, come on, you go with me. I believe he's Sir Andy Murray. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> it's crazy. It, like, <laughs> well, like when the French, uh, when a French guy wins, France loses their friggin' mind. I mean, it is such a big tournament outside the United States that it, I mean, we don't we don't understand right. the because like we're uh, I we're so privileged in this country mm-hmm. with like all we're we're inundated with all kinds of sports and all kinds of sport heroes, and it, like other countries really value the the different aspects of each sport that they do right whereas here we're just like ah they're overpaid you know that's that's all we worry about half the time you know as a population this is josh's i hate america rant this Go isn't ahead. i hate america <laughs> you see you see how over- i know he smoothed that in we're there we're overprivileged there it is i'm start <laughs> hey i gotta apologize to my fiance for dropping the f-bomb earlier she gonna get on me oh okay she don't like when you cuss she likes when i cuss but she knows that other people want to see this ah uh, and so when i hit the f-bomb she's she's a principal man Oh, yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Now, what level school is that? High school. High school. Yeah, she's a high school principal. So, like, I got to walk in with my Mario. I got to walk in with Mario <laughs> when I go places. I'm when you're on like, stage, she gets it. Yeah, she gets all that. She gets it at home, too. She, you know, we, we, we are self at home, but I just don't – I just want her to be as professional as possible because well, I'm course. a representation of her. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Uh, and that's, that's really – a good thing. I apologize for the F-bomb earlier. Plus, her mom is my Facebook friend. Oh, yeah? yeah. No, <laughs> her dad wouldn't care, actually. Her dad, is he's a, he's a cool guy. And uh, he's actually full-blooded Australian. Oh, so cool. So, conversation's a little bit different than going to Missouri Dude, and I, having a conversation with the mom. I, I got to spend three months with Aussies overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on three different Australian ships. Um, right. Every time the Commodore shifted his flag, I, I went to a different Aussie ship. Man, I love Australians. They are amazing people. It's like the way we were in the 70s because they don't worry about political correctness. They just say shit the way it is. Right. And they're not worried about like hurting people's feelings because it's mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, we all have opinions. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think more of humans should have that type of conversation, though. An I mean, honest one. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll sit and have a talk. Like, with you, I think the conversation we have is very honest. Like, with this, conversations are very honest when yeah. we have them. And, like, I'm going to say, well, you did it, do, 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 and then behind your back say something different. Right. I mean, because you know what you're going to get from a person, and you can trust them if you have the type of conversation. You have a conversation with, with an English person, they're going to cuss you out and tell you exactly how they feel about exactly. you. Exactly. And you ain't got to worry about what they're saying. In America, I think we sugarcoat too much. We do. We do. Sugarcoat right? too much. See, it, what are you saying? He hates America now just by saying that? Goo is, See, a, Goo is a legend. Don't don't, don't be nice. <laughs> hey, my my view my views on America is gonna be definitely different than a lot of people's. <laughs> I <laughs> he's what's good about America, Josh. Come Goo's, on now. Goo's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was your response. Goo's a legend. Yeah, you leave Mario right. alone. When, <laughs> Mario. Mario. Well, when I ev- evolve into a legendary status, then I'm able to talk like that. Yes. Okay. Fair, that's so, fair so that will never happen. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I think the next thing that I want to do as far as comedies in, in is uh, concerned is start doing more of the comedy festivals. Yeah. I want to travel to do more comedy festivals. Didn't Larry just do like DC? He just Larry did, did he DC, did. man. Yeah. He, he did DC. Uh, me and him had a conversation. Matter of fact, uh, me and him talked the other night at like one o'clock in the morning to like two. Um <clears throat> y'all know anything about Larry. Larry's a night owl, man. He never mm-hmm. sleeps. Oh, he's yeah. always, I'm always watching those videos. He's always so in a gas station hilarious. parking lot. Yeah, just in the dark. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, me and Larry started. We did our first show together probably like six years ago here in Lexington. Me and him. Um, that's back when we was who's gonna go. We was openers. <laughs> we was like, yeah. you gonna go first? Am I gonna go first this time? We, we just switched it back and forth. Who's gonna be the first one to go on stage? But uh, he did DC. Um, he said it was. A, he said it was. He was. It was nice, man. He did a, a comedy club in DC. It was like nine comics that went on stage. Um, he did his thing, man. Got rubbed some shoulders and elbow. Larry's all about making connections. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know he got to figure it out. It's He's all smart. about making connections. It ain't about making that dollar right now. It's about making connections, and then later on, down the road, um, you get that that show that you've been looking for from that person. That's very um, smart. He's actually friends with a lot of people in the game that are like actually headlining at L.A. Larry's then took like seven trips out of L.A. So yeah. me and him talk about chop it up a lot. Um, me, him, and Joe Deuce. Yeah, everybody knows Joe. Joe. Uh, 
Joe's a killer on stage. It's man. another guy we got to get on the show. Yeah, Joe's Joe's a killer on stage. Um, so we have a lot of conversations about um, actually hitting the road together. Mm-hmm. We do it. We think think talk about that a lot. Um, but yeah, I want to do comedy festivals, man, and uh, rub shoulders, man. Get to know more people because I feel like um, I haven't been around enough other comics. I've done a lot of shows in a lot of cities, but I haven't been in around enough other comics to like pull from what type of stuff they're doing. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you, 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 you think about your favorite comic that you saw growing up. You pulled one or two different type of mannerisms at least from them. Sure. Um I grew up watching Martin, was my he's my favorite comedian, Jamie Foxx and I love Dane Cook. <laughs> Dane Cook. The word, like, Crazy. people don't pay attention to D- Dane's Cook wordplay. Like, he uses almost every word in the vocabulary when he starts doing his comedy. And that's yeah. be- it's a beautiful thing. Because, you know, you, you, you think about, we comics, we ain't jesters. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're not court jesters. We comics. Right. So it's like, we're intelligent people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we up here just, all right, I'm going to juggle this ball to make you laugh. No. We talk about political stuff. We right. Talk about, we try to stay away from religion, but we talk about it. Sure. You know? So... I just want to pull from a lot of different aspects of how to get better as a whole as a comic. And it's like I said, man, it's not a question of just, you know, if it's, it's just when with you, I mean, you're, you are one of the guys that are going to blow up out of this place. Appreciate it, man. No, I mean, everybody feels that way. Everybody's seen you work on stage. You got good ethics when it comes to, to, you know, your stage presence and you watch things you say and, and how you say it. And we, we've, we've all watched you. And uh, you're, you're definitely going to be one of those guys that uh, gets up there and just blows things out of the water. I'm, I'm waiting for you and Starks and Joe to just kind of do I mean, a tour. Yeah, yeah. Do that's, that's, that's what that's we've what been talking I'm, about. I'm, yeah. I mean, I think that'd be a hell you, of a show. That would be a hell of a show. I'll MC. Yeah. I'll MC. That that's way you what, guys ain't going to worry about you it. You don't yeah. want Josh doing that. Josh is all right, though, man. Josh is a great MC, man. Thank I, you. I like how Josh does don't, his thing. Wait, 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 wait. wait can, can, can you say that one more time? <laughs> Josh is a great MC. See that? His head's going to fucking explode. Look at that shit. I say this. If. If the MC here ever be like, I'm sitting down, I'm tired, I've been doing it long enough, he's going to be your next one. You think so? I'm going to yeah. say that. Uh, he, he, that's possible. Your, we, your lips to God's ears. We, we, we've <laughs> talked about that at one point. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Scott Wilson's a great guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been doing this 34 years. Yeah, it's Scott when he's, when he's ready to retire. And, I don't know when that's going to happen. And, but. and Scott has talked about numerous times that he's going to do this till he's 60. He's 57 now. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, who knows? 60 may roll around. He may be like, no, I'm going to do more. I mean, right. it's, I, I assume Scott is welcome here as long as he wants to be here. Um, if if I ever had that opportunity, of course, I'd take it in a right. heartbeat. I right. love this club. That's Absolutely. if you don't get deported. but. Why would I get deported? Because you hate America. <laughs> <laughs> Who comes on the show and everybody's like, wait, I, I thought Josh loved America. He hates America? He hates it. I, it's my he favorite thing is when you get it. somebody on there, they'll say something and I'll just stick on it. Yeah. Hold on. A whole show. Don't right. bug it. He's the me. Palestinians telling the Jew he hates America. Yeah, yeah. man. Come yeah. on. You I was like born that? here. You like that? Uh, at, the end, I at the end of you, a black guy. <laughs> at the end of you, a black guy. I'm all Kentucky, man. I was born here and raised. <laughs> born and raised. Kentucky. Yeah. What do y'all think about Kentucky? Y'all like Kentucky? You know, uh, I've been coming back here for 25 years now. You okay. know, I'm from Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I came down here because of the military, and I, I just keep coming back to the place. Uh, it, it's beautiful. The people are a, a a medium, what I call a medium. Like up north, you've got the high. Down south, you got the low. And what I mean by that is attitudes. Mm-hmm. Like in, in when you go deep south, people are just really slow with the way they say things and the way they talk to you. Uh, up north, they're very aggressive. Uh, so here, it was kind of a happy medium between the two. People in Kentucky still talk about it behind your back. They'll smile at your face and talk about it behind your back, which I frown upon. Right. But the state itself is beautiful. The people, for the most part, are good people. You've got a little bit of everything here. And I agree with you and Larry. I think that when you blow up, it's going to be people going to say, and straight out of Kentucky, mm-hmm. Goo McIntyre. Straight right. out of Kentucky, Larry Starks. You know, I mean, I, I, I agree with that, and I would love to see that myself. I love Kentucky. Like, I, I, I love Kentucky. Like, I wasn't a big fan of wanting to live here. Like, I traveled a lot. Like, I lived in New York. I lived in, um, I lived in Nashville. I spent seven years in Louisville. Uh, so, I, but I love Kentucky, man. I love the folks in Kentucky that I run into. Now, you have some. That's everywhere you go. Sure. But I love how, you know, we relate. You know, you're thinking about – I think about people they call hillbillies yeah. or backwood Kentucky. And I think about where I was raised around the black folks that's from the country. Same people. Right. Same people. And, and, and it, the catch-22 about it is that most of the time those are the two 
type of people that have problems with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, why? We're the same person. We're, yeah. We're the same person. We go through the same thing. We, 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 we live, we, we live to, uh, Live off the government. We all, <laughs> we we all we all want that extra extra check. I and then that's kind of the basis of this this podcast. I don't understand why human beings, because that's mm-hmm. what we all are. We all human right. beings. Why can't we just show common courtesy to each other? There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't take that much effort. Matter of fact, it's less effort than to be hateful. Right. You know. I mean, you should just you should celebrate each other's differences, not be annoyed by them. Hundred percent. That's yeah. how I was raised, man. My mom, man, she would play Luther Vandross and then she'll play CCR. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's how we was raised. So. Right. We were just talking about CCR the other day. How uh, John Fogarty got screwed. Do you remember that? Way mm. back in the day? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Tom Fogarty actually, like when the band broke up, he right. tried to get the rights to all the music. And okay. like, uh, John Fogarty was like completely screwed out of his money for like two decades till he came up with uh, Centerfield. Uh-huh. You know, and he started making his own money again. Um, but yeah, he gets screwed out of a lot of those royalties. And he was the lead singer and the lead lead uh, artist. Wow. With the whole group. Sorry. I didn't know it. I, I didn't know what tidbit uh, mean you got age difference. Um, yeah, a little bit. But- <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I, I got you, I think, by seven years. So you ain't that much, homie. Yeah, you yeah. ain't that much, man. That was once, a nice way of saying you're an old fuck. No, but once you, I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm telling you, once you get <laughs> past like ish. 30, once you get past 30. Yeah, you stop counting. <laughs> you stop counting. Everybody's yeah. the same person at that point. Yeah. You didn't live. You should have matured by this time. Should have. You should have. Should have. <laughs> matured by this time. Sure. So it's all the same, man. So uh, what's your what's your social media, man? How can people get in touch with you? Hey, you can follow me um, on uh, Goo McIntyre Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter at Leon Blackspade. Um, yeah, it's a, that's a story behind Leon Blackspade. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, the underscore, the real goo, and uh, Snapchat, GooDayBoney33. <laughs> What's the Snapchat again? GooDayBoney33. The, the story behind that is that our music group name was Mr. Dayboney. Okay. That was our uh, music group name. That makes sense. And if you, the word Dayboney is the, is the word anybody jumbled around. Right. So oh, it's okay. Mr. Anybody. So our basically our music catered to anybody. Gotcha. So we just named cool. Mr. Day Boney sounded better than Mr. Anybody. That is really cool. That does so sound really did. cool. Yeah. Big up to Marquise McIntyre, man. Queedy, man. He's a he was the dude I did music with. Like he's one of the best pure artists that I've ever heard. Yeah. You know, things didn't really work out for us musically because of life, but musically he's one of the most gifted guys. And actually he's funny. He's just stage he's the stage shy guy. Yeah. But he's like one of the guys I get a lot of my comic stuff from, like touring with him. He's he's a funny guy. That's that's one of the the heartbreaking things when you see somebody who's really talented that it just never happens for him. I mean, it's the story of probably a lot of people's lives. Mm-hmm. But when you see someone that's just special and they don't make it, and it that just and it's because of life always. It's always something happens where they they couldn't pursue it as hard as they wanted to or or something like that. Right. But uh, no, I, I agree with that. I don't like that either. Well. Uh, this has been a fantastic, dude. I mean, really appreciate you being on the show. We, uh, I mean, like like I told you at the beginning of the show, we've wanted you on the show for uh, probably since its inception, to be mm-hmm. honest. Anytime, man. Anytime. Um, yeah, and you're, you're always welcome to come back anytime. Anything comes up, uh, feel free to say, hey, man, can I jump on the show? We're, I mean, we're, we're starting to blow up with uh, some advertisers here coming up soon. And, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, our, our fan base is getting bigger by every month. Thank God to uh, this club and this club's owner. Uh, they've, been, mm. they've been great to us. Um, Absolutely, but I appreciate it, man. Like, like I said, like this is a great platform. If not just locally, but for any comic to come through the area, you Absolutely. know, to sit and have his show, you know, and um, to gives, reach out, it gives people a, a, an opportunity to, to say a side of them that they don't get to see on stage. You know, you don't go up there and talk about, right. you know, your grandmother or your mm-hmm. your mother or how they were funny. It mm-hmm. just gives people a different idea about you. And I think it's a, it, like you said, it's a great venue for. People. I think it'll connect more of the jokes now to understand. Sure. You know, where what I talk about, like I talk about my uncle being out of prison. He really was in and out of prison. You know, like right. you know, you got to be able to connect that type of stuff. I always think of that joke where you talk about. He said, "Hey, spot me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he said, "Spot me, man." I had to spot him, and he spotted me. I didn't. <laughs> he spotted me. Yeah, come on, man, do something about that. Y'all get the joke when y'all hear the joke, though. Just see Goo McIntyre anytime you have an opportunity to see him. Uh, I mean, this guy's fantastic. Uh, Crossroads Comedy Project can be found on uh, Podbean and iTunes, uh, YouTube, Sound something. Facebook. Uh, Facebook, iTunes, uh, I said iTunes, Twitter, Laughable. We're, every social media outlet we're on, um, you can look up uh, our 
page on Facebook. Ish and I both have. You you don't have a fan page yet, do you? Do you have a fan page? I'm sure I do. Okay. I don't know. I have a fan page. I'll start a comedian. I have, I have uh, a fan page also, but I found that a lot of people don't follow the fan page. They don't. They follow your personal page. That's I've been promoting more of the personal page. I have 26,000 followers on my fan page. You do? Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing about, you know, even I keep going back to Larry. Larry has more followers on his personal page than I think he does. That's what page. he was talking about. He, he, yeah. said, he said he was going to do a fan page, but he, instead he just, I thought it, like he just has followers. Like right. People yeah. just keep following mm-hmm. him, which is neat. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concern, you can comment or send us an email at crosswordscomedyproject at gmail.com. And uh, this weekend, Steve Byrne is going to be here at Comedy Off Broadway. So get your tickets for this guy. He's a really funny guy. Yeah. There's still plenty of tickets to go. And uh, if you send me something fun to talk about for our next comic that's coming on here, I'll get you free tickets to the show this weekend. How's that sound? So uh, do that. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, cool. Goo, you got anything else? Um, nah, man. Just thank y'all for having me on the stage, man. And and um, I like to come back once I get all my my dates set up, and we can talk about that. And absolutely, absolutely, go from there, man. Anytime you want it, you're more than welcome on here at any time. Ish, you got anything else? Nope, that covers it. All right. Well, for Goo McIntyre and Ish I'm Josh Arm. You guys have a good night. Thank you.